All right, so in this video, we're just gonna look at that third type of for loop that we've been talking about, where we can specify different values. So we, in the last video, we spent time tracing through the for loop with this third type where we have the three different parameters going on, and we'll talk about those again in a second. So we're just gonna type through these three different examples so that you can see it in action. So I'm going to open up Python, do file, new file, and then file, save as. And then we'll save it in our computer science folder, right where we saved the others, but this one will be unit four, lesson four, four loops, and this is the second lesson on four loops. So there we've got that all saved, and then I can get those side by side. So we're gonna start with example one. So we put our comment at the top, unit four, lesson four, four loops type three. And we'll do just four loops type three in action. So I'm just going to do each example one at a time, and then we can talk through what's actually going on. So this is going to be example one, and before it, I'm going to print example one to the screen so that we know exactly which example we're looking at. So the first for loop says four i in range one twenty four seven. And then all we're going to do here is print that i value to the screen. So if I save this and I run it, what we see happening is we see 1, 8, 15, 22. So if we look here and compare it, what you see is it starts at 1. That's i's first value. Remember that this 7 is how the values increment each time. So this is going to add 7. So 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 plus 7 is 22. Then from there, this 24 is our stopping condition. So basically, we will go while the numbers are less than 24. So while i is less than 24, that's what we will do. We'll start at 1 and we'll increment by 7 every time. So that's what we expected to see here, and that's exactly what we saw. We had 22, but then 22 plus 7 is 29, and as a result, that's larger than 24, so it no longer runs. So there's our first example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a blank line between the examples, and we'll do example 2. So here I'm going to print example 2 to the screen to start, and then we're going to type in example 2 that we can see it in action. So we have four, I'm calling this one value. Notice I can call i whatever I'd like. It doesn't need to be i. In this case, I'm calling it value. So I have four value in range and I have three, 35. We print the value to the screen. So I'm going to save that and run it. And it's mad at me, name p is not defined. Where did I put a p? So right here, accidentally, there we go. We'll fix that up and then we'll try to run it one more time. So if we press, there we go. So we see example two start. And then if we compare it to the code that we wrote, we see that it starts at three and then it increments by the five that we expected. So we see three plus five is eight, plus five is 13, plus five is 18, plus five is 23. And this will continue to go while the numbers are less than this middle number of 30. We start at three because that's the value we put first. So this is starting and ending conditions. And then we increment by five each and every time. So there's example two. And then last but not least, we'll look at example three. So here we're going to put in another empty line just to make it easier to read. Then we have example three, so we'll do print example three, so we know that we're doing example three on the screen. Then we have four num, notice how I'm naming this one num and not i or value, in range, and we're doing 20, 10, negative two. And we're going to print that number to the screen. So there's our third and final for loop of type three. So now if we click run, I'm gonna shrink this down just a little bit so I can scroll down, there we go. 
And notice here, okay, we start at 20. That's where we start. Our incrementing value is negative two, so we're going down negative two each time. And remember, this is going to keep running while your number is greater than 10. So notice how if you have a negative incrementation, it flips this inequality sign here. So here we're always less than 30 or less than 24, but now that we have something that is decreasing over time, it goes until the number is less than, or it goes while the number is greater than 10, and once it's 10 or less than 10, it stops. So notice that it could have gone to 10, but it doesn't. It stops at 12, and if it equals 10, so if equals 10, the loop doesn't run. So then from here, we can see our starting condition, our ending condition, and our incrementation. They follow suit just like we did before. If you want to add in those same notes, we started at 20 and we decreased by two each time. So there's type three. So now you should have a much better understanding of the three different types of for loops and how they work.